Check out Ryan and the commitment to getting the shot. Dude, you gotta check out you, Brian. You look amazing in this shot. Oh, thank you. The obsessive TP. Welcome all you Xperia Golf lovers. The goal of this video is to help you capture better looking cinematic visuals from the golf course. And number one on our list is to shoot during magic hour or golden hour. Magic hour is the 60 minutes right before sunrise or right after sunset, while golden hour is the 60 minutes directly after sunrise or the 60 minutes right before sunset. As you can see, our first shots from this day with Xperia Golf, as the guys are warming up, was during magic hour. Magic hour is hands down the easiest time to shoot cinematic visuals outdoors. Whether you're filming golf footage, documentary footage, feature film footage, no matter what, it's just easier during magic hour because everywhere you point the camera, you have a nice even light. There's no harsh shadows at all. This is the one time on a feature film set that you'll probably see the least light manipulation. In other words, you'll see less lights, you'll see less gack, less flags, less bounces, less scrims. Everything's dialed back because it already looks good. You don't have a lot of work to do as a cinematographer. Compare Magic Hour to this shot where the sun is much higher in the sky. Here we'll have shadows on the face that are super unpleasant. It's just best to avoid this at all costs. Compare that to a shot during golden hour and it's clear that golden hour also looks pleasant. Here the sun has risen, but it's lower on the horizon, meaning it has to travel through much more of the atmosphere, so it's a bit diffused and not as bright as it is when it's way higher in the sky. It's just a much more flattering angle. Think about a light coming straight down on your character from above through the eyebrows, through all this stuff, casting shadow on their eyes versus something like this where the light is just coming straight at me. There's not crazy shadows with my, what are these called, eyebrows? My forehead is not casting any kind of shadow on my eyes. Like Magic Hour, this time of the day is much easier to capture cinematic visuals. It sucks that you have to get up early if you're doing sunrise, but it's totally worth it because it looks so much better than the middle of the day. Now, let's hop over to another tip from the golf course. There's two things you gotta work through when you're out here on the golf course. You obviously want a good backdrop and you want good lighting. So there's two things you're gonna be fighting <laughs> throughout your golf shoot, essentially. I love that some sort of edge light. You don't have to shoot directly into the sun, but if the sun is edging, like Kevin right now, basically any angle on him right here, he has a nice edge with the sun being kind of behind him. Doesn't need to be directly behind him. I mean, we look nice, right? <laughs> any angle this direction is gonna look good, and then you kind of gotta pick your background. So I would put Brian on the left third. I would put this Oh no, he's left-handed. Yeah, I would put up. Brian. Lefty for the hour I would again. put Brian on the right third, and I would put the pin on the left third. That'll give you a nice. Hopefully, there's enough edge light on that too. Yeah, I think he's pretty. He's decently edged. I think that's as good as we can get with Brian being a lefty. <laughs> if he see, if he was a righty, if he was a righty, the camera could be a little bit over there, and then you get more of a backlight, which would look a little bit better. So now I would bring the camera this way. I would bring the camera this way, and now see how he has more of an edge now. So he's on the left third, Pin is on the right third. You have our beautiful golf cart carts behind us. You have the mountains, trees, like actually really nice mountains. That's the best shot. I still think the lefty shot was better, but it's okay. <laughs> you guys, you guys decide. So as you can see, all the slow-mo and B-roll I captured here, the sun is always behind the subject. Check out the shadows on every single shot. All of them are facing toward the camera direction. The downside here is the sky can easily get overexposed because the sun is usually in the background of the shot or just out of frame. But no matter what, the sun is brightening up the sky with a wide diameter. So if the sun is just out of your frame, it's still gonna be really light in the sky in your frame. I'm personally not a fan of white sky. I'd rather have a nice blue sky or cyan or teal. Unfortunately for us on this day, it was pretty overcast as well. So 
I think only one or two shots, we get a nice blue sky. But it's something to look out for. You want the sun behind your subject, but you also want to shoot into a not super bright part of the sky. It's kind of a catch 22, but if you can find the balance, it looks so good. Now let's move on to one of the most prevalent issues that I've seen on golf channels or any kind of exterior cinematography work on small camera rigs, such as the Sony or Canon DSLRs. We've all done this. I have sat down indoors after I've shot, gone through the footage like this 100 times, and it's super depressing every time. It's overexposed footage. One of the worst things about overexposed visuals is it's really hard to bring the skin tone back and make it look natural because it's really white. Also, the sky is completely gone, just a white crazy mess. Now, why does this happen so often on these small cameras? One of the biggest reasons is that the LCDs on these cameras are just not bright enough for outdoor use. They're about as bright as a cheap TV, 250 nits or so, even our red helium basic 5.5 inch LCD, it's just not bright enough for outdoor use. We went and pretty much immediately bought a brighter seven inch monitor because we just could not use this thing outdoors. So what is the fix for this? I think there's two and let's go through them now. One is learning how to read a histogram or enabling zebras on the monitor. There's a billion videos on this and it helps you not blow out the highlights in your visuals and you can go look at those videos if you're interested in those avenues. But I think there's a better fix for this. And the best fix for this, in my opinion, is using a brighter monitor, anything over 800 nits. My favorite monitor is the Ultra Bright series from Small HD. They're over 2000 nits, I think 2200, it's crazy. You'll never need to use a hood or a flag or a sweater if you've done that before, or <laughs> which we've done, you need nothing. You can see every detail with the bright sun on a summer day with this monitor, it's great you will never need to worry about overexposing again. Also, what's cool about these monitors is that there's false color built in, which is my favorite tool in dialing in skin tone on set and making every single shot consistent. It helps a lot in color correction. Believe me, I know. There's a bunch of other monitors too on the market because I realize these are expensive. I would recommend anything over a thousand nits for outdoor sunny use. All right, so another tip is using ND. If you use ND, which are these little squares in here, it actually is like sunglasses for your camera. What that allows you to do is have more depth of field in the background. So the background is more out of focus, which looks really cinematic. The downside to that is it's harder to focus because your focus plane is actually much smaller, but using ND, is just another tip to allow you to have more cinematic visuals. Now, the final tip I wanted to go through was impossible because of the windy conditions we had on this film day with Xperia Golf. I really wanted to do it. I had it in my hand, but when I walked out of the van here, it, it immediately got blown out of my hand and I realized it wasn't gonna work. But what it is, is using a bounce car to fill in your subject. So I talked a lot about edge light here and edge light's great. You have the sun behind you, but with the sun behind you, you're not filling in the face of your subject or your actors. And it's a little bit darker compared to the background, right? What helps with this is to bring in a bounce card. The bounce card helps to bring sunlight back on their face because the sunlight's behind our subject, right? Just like here, right there, that's our sun. And it's actually bouncing, you don't see it. It's bouncing in a white foam core beadboard bounce and it's filling in my face. That's all that's filling me in right now. And it works perfectly. So on your exterior setups, your golf course perhaps, this would help fill in your subjects beautifully and it makes a nice reflective, nice ref and it makes a nice reflection in your subject's eyes. There's tons of different bounce cards on the market. Some of them fold up. Others you can make out of insulation material from Lowe's or Home Depot, which is what this is. Honestly, anything white will do the job as long as you can hold it. What's difficult about this is you kind of need that extra person to hold a bounce card, which I realize for some of you smaller setups, it's gonna be difficult, but it, I'm telling you it would be worth it for some of your setups. That's all the tips I have for today. I hope this was helpful. Comment down below if anything didn't make sense or you want clarity on anything or if you thought something was really helpful for you. I would love to hear any kind of feedback you have. Make sure you stick around for the second video because we're going to have a video where we show the 
A7 III footage and the red Komodo footage side by side on this Xperia Golf Day shoot. It's gonna be super cool and informative and show you guys the difference between the cameras. You know, maybe you'll lean towards the Komodo, maybe you'll lean towards the A7 III. It's up to you and I think it's great knowledge for you guys to be able to see firsthand. So stick around for that. Stay obsessed.